What's up you guys? This is your girl Dragon. It is time for another creative block live tutorial. This one's going to be a good one. This one comes by request from Sunset Drive. And he is trying to put together a map where he needs random spawning. Spawning. So we're going to go ahead and help him with that request. I have a setup here that hopefully will help him complete his game. In addition to that, he wants to be able to spawn back in the game area instead of the pre-game area. And we have that as well. This is going to be a really good one. In addition to this, I'm going to show you guys two options. This video will cover an option where you're using teleporter groups to spawn randomly in the game area. But if you want to, you can stay tuned for the second video where I show you how to use a player reference device and spawn randomly as well with a timed pregame setup. So be sure to stay tuned for that if that's what you're looking for um, and keep an eye out for that next video. So let's go ahead and focus here on this one using teleporter groups. What I'm gonna do is show you guys what we're gonna be building, explain to you the structure, and then I'll show you the settings. So let's go ahead and start with the test. All right, players spawn and they don't have a timed option to pick teams so they can pick teams whenever they want. You can see here that it says A and B. So that basically means which teleporter group the team is assigned to. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose team one and I'm going to spawn here. And then we're gonna also have the other player choose team one. And you see they do not spawn in the same place, which is really cool. Next, let's go ahead and see what happens when they choose separate teams. All right, in this scenario, the players will be choosing separate teams, either team one or team two. So first player chooses team two and second player chooses team one and they still spawn in different areas. You can see how it correlates with the groups. Next, let's try a different scenario where both players choose team two. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and choose team two and I'm right here and then the other player will go into team two and you can see we're spotting in different areas every time. Now, let's see what happens if a player is eliminated. Will they spawn back in pregame? Nope, they spawn right in their designated checkpoint which should be placed in the game area and they can continue the game. All right, so now that you have an idea of how this works, let's go ahead and go through the structure. All right, to get this set up, you're going to need your class selectors, teleporters, and if you're using classes, class designer, each correlating with each team. You're gonna need the exact number of teleporters that you want players to teleport to in their random dis destinations. In addition to that, you want to have a player checkpoint pad for each team or area. So you see here I have nine teleporters for the game area, each designated to a group or team and two in the pregame area, each dedicated to a team as well, our group. So this is team one, group A, team two, group B. Of course, you're gonna need your player spawner pads 
And that's practically it for this particular setup. Now let's go through settings. Now your player spawner pads are quite simplistic when you do your setup. For me, I'm using a designated team. As you can see, I always use a team one for my main pad. So that means the first player that spawns in the game will always spawn on this pad. And if I have any particular events, then they will initiate those events upon spawning into the game. I am using this pad as island start and so forth. There's no functions, but I do have some events. When the player spawns on this particular pad for team one, I want them to enable and register the checkpoint pad that they're assigned to. So this will be team one. Next is player team two's checkpoint pad. And you can see it's designated to player team two and it will enable and register a checkpoint pad team two. That's designated to this particular spawner pad when they spawn in. Next for this setup, we have team one, class selector, and a teleporter, and a class designer. So that constitutes the group for team one. When they select a team, or when they select team one, they'll be switched to team one, and in the teleporter's right there, and they'll be teleported to a random teleporter in the game area. So let's see what that looks like. I'm having them switch to class one and to team one. When they enter this zone and there's no functions and there's no events. If you want particular events to take place when they enter the zone, then this is where you would like to put them here. You would want to put them right here in events, either on class switched or on team switched. Next, I have my teleporter, which I have set to invisible. And you can see there's no main teleporter group, but we do have a target group of group A and it's selected for team one only. Now this is where it happens. When they enter this, it's going to actually change the teleporter target on entry. So that's when this happens here. So you can see at the bottom it says determines how often the teleporter will select a new random destination from its target group. When they enter this teleporter, I want it to randomize a destination from the target group. The target group is target group A. And I'll go ahead and go through those again so you can see. All right, cool. For functions, we do not have anything. And for events, on teleported, as a safety measure, I have to register them to the checkpoint pad. And that's the checkpoint pad designated to team one. Now you can put it here, or you can put it when they spawn in. So, quick note. If you have players that are not designated like I have it, you can see my spawner pads are designated to team one and team two. You can try to switch the event here to register to the checkpoint pad and just have them register when they switch teams or when they teleport. 
So you do have that option. Next is the class designer. If you're using classes, this is what you'll want to use to configure your class and your team. I have it set to class one and nothing's configured. Everything's on default because we're not really using that for the tutorial. And you can see here to see how it connects, it's switching the class one into team one. So whatever I change here, let's say if I add, you know, invincibility or anything like that, when they switch to this team, they'll have those particular attributes. Now let's check out team two or group B. So we're switching to class two and to team two. And on team switched, we're going to register them to the team two checkpoint pad, which will allow them to respawn in the game area when they are eliminated. Now let's check out the teleporter. And this is set to target group B. What selected team two. And it's gonna change that target on entry. and there's no functions and no events. And then, then you have your class designer. Um, again, it's practically the same, except it's going to be switching to, um, or designated to class two, I'm sorry. And I have it here, class name of team two. And there's no special settings here and there's no events. So if that's what you want, that's where you put those there. Now that we have the pre-game lobby done, let's go ahead and move on to the game area. And these should already be binded. This is player checkpoint pad for team one. And these are the settings. All right, so you can see how that correlates and then go ahead and check out the checkpoint pad for team two. Here, if you want to designate the class, you can go ahead and set that. And you can leave it also on activating team any because it's going to set itself when it's registered, depending on what event it's coming from. So it's gonna be registered when um, a person switches to team two or when a player um, spawns on a pad dedicated to team two. Next, let's check out the teleporters in the game area. So you can see they're each by groups. We have group A, and group B, and they're all placed in random areas. So first, let's look at group A, and you'll see that they're all the same. So I'll just do one. And what you'll do is you're going to set up a group, a target group A and a target group B. And then you're going to copy this and then place them in random areas, like you see here, right? So first, let's look at target group A. So you can see it's designated to teleport, teleporter group A. The target group is set to none. There's no functions and there's no events. Next is group B. This is teleporter group B. The target group is set to none. And you don't even need to set the team because it's already set through 
through the teleporter in the pregame. All right, cool. And you can see when we go to each one, this is group A, they are exactly the same. And let's check out another one. And so forth. So that's how you set that up. I do hope you guys find this beneficial. In addition to that, let's go ahead and run the last play test. So we can look over what we just built and check it out. It looks like I fell over. All right, and I spawn back here. And there we go. Let's go ahead and that's when both players chose team one for that scenario. And then scenario two is when players choose opposite teams. I will do team two and team one for the other player. And we are spawning in different areas. And then lastly, if both players choose team two. Awesome. And of course, if the player is eliminated, instead of spawning back into the pregame, they spawn back into the game area and they can continue to do whatever it is you want them to do. Excellent. If you find this beneficial, please share it with a friend. I do hope it helps you out. In addition, if you're looking to set up this same type of scenario, however, with a timed pregame and you want a static destination per player, we're going to be taking a look at how you can do that with a player reference device. So stay tuned for the next tutorial and I'll show you how to get that done. And I appreciate you guys for being a part of my channel. Thanks for checking it out. I hope it's helped you. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs> Bye.